Hey everyone, welcome to Data Millennials. I'm Atul and in this video we are going to see how we can create and customize bullet chart in our Looker dashboard. So we will be creating this bullet chart which you can see on your screen from scratch. But before we go ahead and start creating this bullet chart, let's first discuss what exactly is the bullet chart and how it can be useful in your dashboard. So bullet chart gives us a way to quickly see how well a metric is performing against a given benchmark or a target benchmark. So for example, the bullet chart that I'm showing right now over here has target of 25 and the actual number or the average number of items sold is way beyond 25. So after seeing this bullet chart, you can say that the business is doing good because whatever target benchmark was, it has been cleared. So bullet chart are simple and it has three components. The first component is a center bar which you can see over here in orange color. So a center bar shows the actual value of the metric that you are creating the graph for. Then the second main component is the vertical line which is over here. It shows the target value. So for us in this example as you can see over here our target value is 25. So we have a vertical bar or vertical, not a bar, vertical line which is showing our target value which is 25. Similarly in our another example over here, our center bar is the actual value of metric and our target line is over here which is a vertical line and it shows that target is 20. Now third and last component of bullet chart is the color band that represent the threshold ranges okay so these color bands are the threshold ranges so bullet chart in looker studio visualize a single metric and we can optionally display a target value as i am displaying a target value over here 25 through this vertical line and we can also set up three ranges in our bullet chart so in our example the bullet chart that we are going to create is based on average sales quantity metric that I'll show you over here. So we have a data over here for each country we have number of items sold in thousand on which date it has been sold and what is the revenue generated from that items or sold items. So we are just going to show how we are performing in terms of sales. Now if we go back to our looker dashboard, at a glance you will see that the average sales is exceeding our target value which is 25. This center bar shows a metric value. This vertical bar is showing our average grade. And this colored bar is showing the ranges from poor to average and good. And based on this graph we can say that we are way above than the average which is 25. So let's go and create the bullet chart from scratch. So the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to click on this edit button. Then I'm going on the second page where I have this header and this text box. So in order to create a bullet chart, the first thing that you will need is a data source. Once you have your data source, then you can go and add a chart option and select the bullet chart. But suppose if you do not have added your data source, then what you need to do is that you need to go on resources click on manage added data sources and click on add a data source then you can select any of your connectors from here and load your data once your data is loaded then you can go and click on add a chart scroll down and you will select this bullet chart under this bullet section once you click on it then looker will allow you to add a bullet chart on your page as soon as the bullet chart will appear on this page, you will see that Looker has by default used some kind of metric over here in setup section and your chart is appearing on your screen. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to discuss about each and every option that we have in our setup section as well as in our style section. And when we will be discussing about these options simultaneously, we will be updating our chart also. So this setup section determine how your data is organized and displayed in your chart. And the first option in your setup is the data source. 
So a data source provides the connection between the component and underlying data set. So the component is this chart over here and your data set is this or your underlying data set is this data set which you are using for creating this chart. Now if you want to change your data set then you have to click over here and select any of your added data source or you can select any of your available data sources from here. Now if you want to add a new data source on which you want to create this bullet chart then what you need to do is that you need to click on add data and then Looker will take you to this connector connect to data page. You can select any of your connectors and then Looker will automatically update your data source for this bullet chart. Now the next option that we have over here is date range dimension. So this option appears if your data source has a valid date range and this date range dimension is used as the basis for limiting the date range of the chart. So for example, if your viewer uses a date range control to limit the time frame, then he will be able to see the data in your chart based on the selected date. Now if we go back to our raw data, you will see that we have a date column over here. That's why Looker has automatically detected the date column and set it into this date range dimension. If your data source doesn't have a date column or any column which has an appropriate date format data, then this option will not appear for you. It will be always be blank. Now the next option that we have over here is metric. So metric measures the thing contained in dimension and provide the numerical scale and data series for the chart. So these metrics are the aggregation that come from the underlying data set. So for example, if I go back over here, then you will see that our metric is number of items sold in thousand and we want to show how we are performing in our sales. So we are going to select number of items sold in thousands over here instead of this record count. So we'll select number of items sold in thousand. Now the next option that you have over here is optional metrics. So with this optional metric, we can define a list of additional matrices that we can display in our chart. So once you turn this option on, then you will see that Looker will ask you to add a metric. Now let's go and first click on view over here. As you can see over here right now on our, okay, let me go back to edit and switch off this optional matrix option. Again, let's go to view. Now, if I put my mouse over this chart, you will see that you have only these three dots option over here, which says export and diagonals query performance. But we are not able to add or drill down further more or add another metric over here, which can be shown on this graph. But if I click on edit and go back to the setup section and turn on this optional metric option. So this metric option helps us to define a list of additional matrices, right? So if we want to add additional matrices, then we can click on add a metric and we can add this revenue in millions. So now if I go and click on view and keep my mouse on this chart, you will see that an option has appeared over here which says optional metrics. Currently I'm showing the number of items sold or our graph is showing how we are performing in terms of sales value, sales, not sales value, sales. But if I click over here, then I have an, another option of showing revenue in millions. As soon as I select this revenue in millions, then this graph will unselect this number of items sold in thousand and it will select this revenue in millions as my data and it will start showing me how we are performing in terms of generating the revenue. So this is the benefit of optional metrics. You can add an additional metric in the same graph. Now the next option that we have over here is range limits. So this range limit specifies the threshold values for the chart. Ranges often indicate poor, average and good threshold. By default, bullet chart can set the range values to 1, 2 and 3 in these three ranges. You should adjust these to better fit your actual data. You can remove a range from chart by setting it to 0. So if you want to remove this poor range, you can set it to 0 and your poor range will be disappeared from your chart. Again, if you want to remove this average range, this range 2 pertains to average range. So if I remove and put it 0, then you will see that the shaded color has changed. Similarly, if I remove this range 3, you will see that the entire graph has been made invisible for us. Now, if you do not want 
ranges at all then what you can do is that you can set all these three ranges to the same value so let's keep 10 as range 1 10 as range 2 and 10 as range 3 now you do not have a range for poor average and good all these three ranges are same so this range 1 it sets the threshold for poor range this range 2 sets the threshold for average range range 3 sets the threshold for good range so for us let's keep the range 1 at 20 range 2 at 25 and range 3 at 80 now what we have to do over here with metrics is that instead of this sum let's select this average so what we can see over here is that we have two different oh, sorry three different color ranges so this first color range is poor which shows poor range then we have average range from this point 20 to 25 then from 25 onward till 80 it's a good range now the next option that we have over here is target so this target lets you specify the target value for your chart now for example this first option show target it is used to either show or hide the vertical target bar as you can see over here our target value has been set to 1.5 so let's remove this target value and change this target value from 1.5 to 25 so what this means is that we have set a target saying that 25 is our target so this means that we have to make sure that our sales is more than 25,000 and I'm taking this 25,000 because if I go to my data and this column number of items sold in thousand so this means that Bahrain has done 23,000 of sales so if I take average of this column over here you will see that our average is 53 now at a country level I have two country over here one is Bahrain and one is India so at each country level if I divide 53 by 2 it would somehow come between 26 or 25 so let's keep 25 as our target value now the next option that we have over here is default date range so this default date range property lets you set a time frame for individual chart if you want to select your date range based on your requirement then you can select this custom or you can set this auto this auto is used the default date range determined by the chart data source so this auto uses the date range which you have in your raw data here and if you want to select your date range based on your requirement then this custom lets you use the calendar widget from here to select a custom date range for the chart you can come over here and you can select any of the custom date range based on your requirement now the next option that we have over here is comparison date range so it displays the comparison data for the selected time period if you want to compare your data for a specific period of time then you can set your start date and end date and it will compare the data for you on this chart and the last option that we have over here is filter so this filter restricts the data that is displayed in the component which is this chart by including or excluding the values which you specify so if you want to add a filter on your data then what you have to do is that you have to click on add a filter then you have to click on create a filter you have to give a filtration name so that in future you can understand what this filtration does then we have an option of either include or exclude suppose if you want to exclude a per particular country then you can select exclude then you have to select a field from which you want to exclude that data value then you have to select a condition and then you have to give a value over here and then you can click on save and once you click on save then your chart will start reflecting data based on the filtration that you have applied so for us we are not going to apply any filtration because we need all our data to be shown over here so that was the last option for setup now the next option that we have over here is style before we discuss the style let's go and click on view 
as you can see over here we have our target value we have this range showing the poor range from 0 to 20 is poor range 20 to 25 is average range and 25 to 80 is good range so as you can see over here our bullet chart is ready but what we can do is that we can make this bullet chart more visually appealing and in order to make this chart visually appealing we have to go and work with the style properties so let's go and work with this style property in this bullet chart so this style property controls the overall presentation and appearance of the chart and the first option that we have over here is the bar color so this bar color section controls the appearance of the center bar and the ranges and the first option that we have bar color is it controls the appearance of the center value bar over here so let's change it to black color and the next that we have is range color it sets the color of the ranges so let's select this bar color as this color only and instead of this black color let's select it as this orange color okay now the next option that we have over here is axis this axis control the appearance of the chart axis which is over here the first option within chart axis is show axis it shows or hides the chart axis the next option that we have is font color it sets the color of the axis level so let's change it to red and then we have this font family it sets the font family of the axis label then we have this compact number so this compact number helps us to round the numbers and display the unit indicator for example if your chart has huge numbers such as 15,000 16,000 or 20,000 it will show you the number as 15k 16k or 20k and then we have this decimal precision so it sets the number of decimal places in your matrix value so if you want to increase the decimal places you can increase decimal places from here but for us we'll keep it at auto the next option that we have is background and border so these options control the appearance of the chart background container the first option that we have is background so it sets the chart background color then the next option that we have over here is border radius it adds the rounded borders to the chart background when radius is 0 the background shape has 90 degree corners but when border radius is of 100 then it produces a circular radius now you won't be able to see the circular radius until unless you change the background color so let's keep it at uh, yellow color and you can see that it's a circular radius let's keep it at zero okay now within this background we have this next option which is opacity it sets the chart opacity 100 percent opacity completely hides the object behind this chart and zero percent opacity makes this chart invisible so it's always suggested that you either select 90% or 100% of your chart opacity within this background and border we have next option of border color it sets the chart border color if you want to change your border color you can select from here then we have border weight it sets the chart border line thickness and last we have this border style it sets the chart border line style so we have four different styles solid that we are using over here right now next we have dashed third we have dotted and the last one is the double so let's keep double and the last option within background and border is add border shadow it adds a shadow to the chart lower and right borders so now if i go and click on view I will be able to see that for my average number of items sold in thousand for each country is way way beyond my target value which is 25 and as per the health or KPI of my business it seems that business is growing. So this is how you can create and customize bullet chart in Looker or Data Studio.
happy learning and see you in the next video